By the way, I still listen to Michael Jackson. The more time that goes by, I'm like, did that happen? 100% it happened. He molested those kids. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Just listen, Courtney. Right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, we're going to talk about Diddy um, because we've been talking about it. That's all we've been talking about. So we thought we'd tell you. But also, <laughs> we don't know what's true and what's not. So I feel like... Exactly. <laughs> For people who, who are always complaining about how fake news has ruined our lives, um, I just want to be upfront that we we don't know who wrote this book, but it all seems pretty believable, <laughs> right? Like, doesn't it just feel like everything that you've heard is like something you've already kind of heard about from like... Yeah, I just know in life, for the most part, where there's smoke, there's fire. That's it. For years, we heard about this wild disgusting behavior by r kelly guess what it was true for years we heard about the epstein stuff guess what it was true yeah there have been rumors for years yeah. about diddy's sexual orientation which isn't that i i never believed it and like, oh i believed it from jump how though like what was the get, what was the tell i can't point to one specific thing but i just always felt when i heard it i was like huh that seems plausible. And by the way, I don't care. Gay, straight, bi, tie, asexual, all the sexuals. I, I don't care. Live your life. Own it and you're free. If, if you are of a sexual orientation, it's okay to just say it. Let's just go for a second that this is completely true. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it is in my gut. It just seems so true. I'm not sure if every single fucking story that we're no, hearing no, no. is true, but like agreed, but like also I do <laughs> <laughs> because like it all, it just, it's, it seems like all of these dots have been connected now. I'm sorry. Weird go on. Shit was going on. Natalie. Yeah. I walked past a news broadcast and all I heard was 20 seconds of this. Can you tell us more about the boxes of lube and firearms you found in the house? I don't game over. I don't need to hear anything else. There's a lot of shit in my house that someone might be. That's weird. Why does she have a lot of Barbies? Well, because, you know, as a child, I collected them and my parents told me to never take them out of the boxes. And now I don't. And now I have a lot of Barbies, which could be weird for a 42 year old woman. Mm -hmm. It ain't lube and firearms. That's a different ball of wax. With the okay? serial numbers all chart off <laughs> hello also there's no v closed circuit video of me beating the ever loving shit out of someone that's why i say where there's smoke there's fire he went on his instagram page and put out a po an apology saying like i've done this i'm so sorry i need to get well if you think that there's all of these other rumors and that's the only true thing then i have some magic beans i'd like to sell you yeah i want to kind of just go down the list of people that when when we as as things have been coming out someone will bring up like you remember you remember this thing remember so and so remember yeah. back in 10 years ago when yada, yada there's this girl amanda rollins i don't know she could just uh, maybe just be a tiktoker but she read the alleged book and she went through so many things and so I just kind of like wrote down some names that I just like wanted to highlight because this was the craziest shit I've ever read. If half of it is true, if 25% of it is true, it's just- If one of the things right, is like, true. And I haven't heard anyone say this, but what happened to Jamie Foxx? Like he was in the hospital in this past year. I have no idea. They didn't really talk about what was wrong with him, but it was just like, he's like clinging to life. My God, I have no, and I love him. Yeah. I think he's beyond, like, so talented. You didn't such hear a nice about guy. him being in the hospital for, like, a long time. No. And it was just, like, nobody really knew, like, what had happened. Hold or on. I just want to, real quick, because yeah. we can. In April 2023, Oscar award-winning actor Jamie Foxx was hospitalized for a medical com uh, complication. Symptoms started with a bad headache. He was taken to the doctor by his daughter and sister, who gave him a cortisone shot. The length of the hospital stay was 20 days. He says, I was gone for 20 yeah. days. I don't remember anything. Yep. I just think he's such a lovely no, man. So, well, so do I. But like, also, we have always heard that he w went both ways. We've always heard Oh, I, that. I've never heard this. Yeah. Never. I've That is one I've heard 
forever. But see, this is what's interesting to me about all of this. I don't care. I uh, no right. I, like I, I don't totally. care if someone goes both ways. I only care in the sense of I just want everyone to be able to live their lives yeah. freely and openly without anyone having an opinion about someone's sexual orientation. Of as long as it's consenting adults, as long as everyone is there because they wholeheartedly want to be there and no one's getting hurt, go on with your bad self. Yeah. I just know we don't live in a world like that, unfortunately. So this is like, you know, a double, triple, allegedly. If pneumonia is what got Kim Porter, which was out of nowhere, and in the book she says, like, he got me. Her last thing was like a group chat. In a group chat, she sent it out to everyone. He got me. They've got to be getting every cell phone record. For, yeah. You know, to, okay. Then yeah. we'll see if she did say that. So. I'm not saying I don't believe her. I'm just oh, saying, no, I'm like, sh- yeah. who knows? Of Everything's course, speculation of, of right course. now. The guy that, like, a producer that she went and maybe either met with or read for or, or whatever, who sent her flowers. Had some and then, like, to. he dies of pneumonia, like, shortly after. They never say, like, even Deadline calls this like the headline on deadline was Jamie Foxx recalls mystery illness. So it's still like, unless again, there's a follow up that i just don't know that I never saw. It has me thinking now, did this happen? Cause I've heard that Jamie tried to opt out. Jamie was a part of this whole thing and he would a part of the freak offs. And what is a freak? What is that? What they called it in the book? That's what they call all of Diddy's parties. Well, the after party, that like the, really where it was heavily just basically kinky. like a mad orgy, like all night long for like days at a time, where they would have to like have those like IV bags just to like get back on their feet afterward. They would go for multiple days in a row. And are they called freak offs? Freak offs uh, as a like this is a general term I don't know I had never heard all... it before this so it's just in the book that we've learned this term maybe I mean not in the book necessarily like it's in uh, it's just what everybody has called it like when everyone is referencing oh like for any been... kind of a party like not just shots for, for orgies where oh I didn't know god I feel like I didn't know anything but listen I, I I've only heard it in connection with him i'm just okay. saying that it wasn't from the book i've been hearing it for months because okay. i don't know when this book came out but like i've been hearing about these diddy's freak offs for a while okay thank you just need so clarity. he was a part of that and one allegedly, of the reasons jamie was right but also in the, yes allegedly and okay. also in the book she does call she does say that he he was involved and that one time she uh he got really pit puffy got really pissed at kim because she enjoyed jamie a little too much and he, she said which i thought was weird because he's he really enjoyed him too that's what kim, that's, kim allegedly said, said yeah happened. that is in her book yes i okay when we're talking about like these big name celebrities yeah. right that are popping in and out of this yeah. alleged story or alleged autobiography so many of them not to be like a wet blanket like throw a wet blanket yeah. on this i don't have an opinion on in the sense yeah. of because i don't i don't know anything the, the reason i have an opinion with oj simpson with uh bill cosby with puffy is because there's so many breadcrumbs that are leading to this giant shit sandwich yeah. right so if you say jamie fox i i had no idea that there were any rumors that he is bisexual i didn't even know that he was sick none of this all i can say with it's not even in relation to Jamie Foxx, but when we bring up like the mystery illness, I don't know one person that's died of pneumonia. Maybe, maybe my aunt Lee yeah, or something I feel like was like 96. You, yeah, when you, I was just going to say, it, it, when you hear these stories, it's usually about 80 or 90 year old women. There has also been talk of him trying to opt out of these freak offs in the recent months. And then this m- mystery illness comes about, which... I, I don't know if they have anything to do with pneumonia, but it just seems no. like people are dying fucking Vladimir Putin style. This is why, though, I brought up the pneumonia of it yeah. all, because I can't speak to anything with Jamie Foxx. I don't know. He seems like a great guy. That's as much as I know. And I think he's an incredibly talented actor and singer and performer. That's the most I can say about Jamie. What I can say is it does leave us looking at people that have historically been connected to Sean. Yeah saying it's okay maybe one person passes from pneumonia these are a lot of people around you that have died even if it's not pneumonia biggie tupac kim 
the random producer, Heavy D, his uh, business partner, the guy I cannot remember, but he, I feel like was like a shorter guy who always wore these like kind of cool retro, like round specs. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many more that I'm not naming because I can't, I'm not that (laughs) intimate with the details of this case, but like, that's a lot of people. Yeah. That is a lot of people. I know. And there's people that like, I can't, like, I can't remember them because I'd never heard of them before. Like, I feel like Eminem calls out someone in like a recent song where he says, he's saying something about like, did he don't put a hit on me? Like, like you did Keefy D or like, right, like is I that don't a know guy? Who Keefy like, D is, is that or, a thing or a person, place or thing? But know. like, is, is Keefy D alive? <laughs> no. Sounds like he's not. He says, or, yeah, I, I don't know. Right. So like that, <laughs> that's another like person. Not. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And these aren't all like, listen, if you're in the mob, yeah, there's going to be a high <laughs> exchange rate, okay? Yeah, yeah. But they're all basically dying the same way. Yeah. These are just a million different deaths, and a lot of them are sketch city. Yeah, and if you're, like, a woman who's, like, had three husbands and all of them have died, like, you're, like, immediately a coin, the Black Widow. <laughs> I-, I watched Dateline. Just, yeah. <laughs> The fingers pointed to you, <laughs> yeah. Roberta. Yeah. Okay. One other thing about Jamie Foxx, because you were saying earlier something about like, it all sounds very Scientology to me. He was dating Tom Cruise's ex for a while. Oh, Katie Holmes? Yeah. Which maybe has nothing, because it's not like she was not in Scientology. She didn't want anything to do with it. I think that's probably why she bailed. Yeah. But um, it just is odd that she keeps finding these dudes that are, maybe gay maybe <laughs> not I don't but know. actually like, bringing up the scientology <laughs> thing because i had forgotten yeah. that i had said that when we were first talking about it we talk off air um <laughs> i've never seen her in my life <laughs> <laughs> i just show up every week <laughs> wanting a course yeah and she lets me talk um there's there's there there with yeah. scientology and i'm even nervous to say it because i don't want some pamphlet in my mailbox tomorrow morning but i'm just saying where there's smoke there's fire not a little oh, okay like one rumor one rumor does not a problem make okay multiple rumors shelly miscavige not being seen hide nor hair of for years yeah and you're Leah Remini coming out with her uh documentary and docuseries about all of this stuff all of the other people that have broken free from this church of scientology and their stories at a certain point it's like it's it's true it's just it's just the goddamn truth. And that's why I brought up the Scientology of it all, because it's just like, it's too much. Well, it's also the same as like, like they get you to, you know, you've got Give to, collateral. You, you have to like tell all of your fucking secrets. You that's do the your collateral. Audits. And then there, and then Diddy's fucking filming everyone. And which I'm sure is how he's gotten away with everything for so long. It's exactly what Epstein did. Like there's, there is something kind of crazy about how yeah, they have like they've the, found this way to just be able to live almighty for so much longer than anybody else ever could. It's like the sexual predator's handbook. Yeah. And so then now not only do they have that collateral on you because it's on tape, but to get you in the door, it's I'm going to make your dreams come true. Yeah. Because I can do that. Yeah. And that's so unfair. That is so brutal to do to someone who's naive and trusting, or even if you're not naive, it's like you you work so hard to get a singular chance. And this person who has made massive career, helped people make massive careers, he's standing in front of you saying, I'll do it. And I'm sure he's charming or, or even if he's not, you know, he's got the credentials to make it happen. He's not some random person you know, quote unquote producer off the street. So of course you're going to believe him. Of course you're going to go to that dinner, go to that after party. And it, it's what I was saying earlier where it's like, yes, going to Harvey Weinstein's hotel room maybe is not the best, smartest look. It doesn't mean Jack diddly squat. You sh- still should be able to exist without fear of someone raping you. Yeah, of you course. still should be able to get ahead, thinking like you're doing stuff to get ahead in your career. I'm going to go to this party. I'm going to network because networking is it's so much of building a business yeah. or building a career. You should be able to go to these things without fear of getting raped. I know. I'm Call her know. Me quaint. <laughs> okay. I know that you're you love JLo so much. And so I, <laughs> just, I do. Like, but yeah, okay. Two, a few things about that. <laughs> Here's what I think about JLo. 
do I think she's completely ambitious and like was driven to get her career to a certain place? And do I think that Puffy, you know, like I just said, even though she had a career, you know, she wanted to get albums made or be taken really, you know, serious as a musical artist, not just an actor. So I'm sure all of that is in the mix on some level. Do I think she did anything wrong in this scenario? No. Do I think she probably witnessed stuff that she's going home and talking to her therapist about being like, this is not okay. And do I think she extricated herself from the situation? Do I think she stood up for herself? That is kind of the vibe I get from her. Cause I don't think she, she had enough fame, notoriety and money on her own that just like how Leah Remini could pull herself out of Scientology more easily than someone who is just a regular person in the Sea Org that's making $5 a day. You know what I mean? I think J-Lo was able to say, okay, this what started as like fun and games or like could be a good look and help my career and I enjoy this person or whatever. This has gone real dark real fast. And I think she was off like a prom dress. But do you do you think, though, because it's in the book, it says that she was a witness to that shooting, that nightclub shooting. I mean, everyone in the nightclub was a witness to it. But if she's a witness to it and then she says, like, you're going to let Shine go to jail for this or prison, like, you don't think that's wrong that she didn't say, like, I'm a witness. I can tell you that's actually not the guy that did it. I actually know who did it. Like, you let someone go to prison for 10 years. Again, I, I understand, like, was I understand she- all the things that go along. Like, there's fear. Like, I don't know how, how abusive he was to her if he was. Uh, he, was I, she a part I, of the- no, When you do that, no one's excluded. You know, I'm, he might have uh, uh, tried to be a little bit more sly with her because she had her own career already yeah. and obviously has her own team and support system. It would be harder to get one over on her, but it does seem like he kind of shows his true colors sooner or later with everyone. But so I understand if she was scared for her life or just like he had threatened her, but it is something that like, if you, you let someone go to jail, you knew that it wasn't him. Do we know, was she a part of the case? Like, did she stand trial on um, in the book? It says that they're all together at the house and Jennifer comes flying in and is like, now it's involving me. Like they're going to call me. Why would they call you? Cause I'm a witness. Like, so he, she, but she said in that scene, I'm not lying for you. Right. So I'm just wondering, like, was she subpoenaed? I don't know what happened with the no, details but, of that court case. Totally. So- if no one asks you, did you lie? But should she let someone like that? But seems- who knows what the implications of that case right. So- were? Right. So like, let's say, personally speaking, I could see how you could be in her shoes and she's told everything to her lawyer And her lawyer's like, right, if you get subpoenaed, you say something, but you're not going to sit there on entertainment tonight when they ask you about this case and you're just going to be like, I saw who was shot because I just, does that then make her a target to be killed? And she is trying to save her own life. So that's what I'm saying. I can understand, like, I understand that personal dilemma of like fear and knowing what somebody is capable of. But if she did not have that fear or if she if if that like wasn't a thing that was like totally overcame her good judgment, then like to literally watch someone be put in handcuffs and hauled off to prison for 10 years for a crime that, you know, they didn't commit. Like, I think that's pretty black and white. Like, you probably should have said something. But this is the thing. I don't think what happened there was black and black and white. Okay, so personally. okay, so now this is me just totally speculating because I've obviously always thought like them getting her and Ben Affleck like getting a divorce out of nowhere to me it kind of seemed like it was I mean yeah we saw them like having arguments here and there or whatever but like after everything after the the movie that they made and like their whole just like oh and on her 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 ring he had it inscribed not going anywhere I didn't know that yeah that's really sweet I feel like they filed for divorce right around the time that Diddy first got like brought in for 
this stuff, like with the home raid. See, to me, all of this is when we get into real murky territory. Right, right, right. So this is like, this isn't in the book. This is just me going. Doing the math. Yeah. Could she have said to him, so, because everyone has known that this was going to come out. Like, Cat Williams, <laughs> like, I never followed before, but now I go back and watch his stuff, and I'm like, he's been right about everything. And how long has he been talking about this, Cat Williams? Like, I think it was in 2023. He said, it's all over in 2024. Everything's coming out. Everyone's going down. Every, you will see everything happen. He, he said it a million times. In relation to the Sean story. Of, of every, yeah, of, of just Anyone like, connected to him, but and it stems I think just from him. Like, just like the fucking pedo ring that is like flying around this town. Oh, so like even people that have nothing to do with Sean. Well, but Sean. everybody seems to have something to do with him. That's Got the it. weird thing. Like this list that I'm like... When I went back to just like say, okay, I want to touch on all these people. We've got Usher, Justin Bieber, Jennifer mm. Lopez, Ben Affleck via sure. J-Lo, Jamie Foxx, Will and Jada, Clive Davis, Tupac, Biggie, Biggie's mom, Faith Evans. And I have Jaguar written on here. Yep. Just so we talk Jaguar, about her. Right. Um, Jay-Z, Beyonce, uh, Kimora, Russell. S like there's just a lot of fucking people. And like, and I didn't even, this is, I'm, I think there's double this but like i yeah. just could not go through that entire transcript i have a, a theory that j-lo kind of had to come clean about like some shits coming out because everyone has known all of that shit with like justin bieber and his wife Haley, who i adore i think she's so cute and i th i do think they're very in love and i really yeah. root for them and i love her style oh she has <laughs> the most amazing to do style with anything but like I've no just i always live for her style her, she has a great nose and like great forehead it's a nose job, like, but that's oh, okay. Well, but by the way, you know. I think it's an amazing note or allegedly. Yeah, I guess I don't even care as long as when they turn out that way. Great. Also, I go think real south. totally. I think a nose job is not that anyone needs to get a nose job. Yeah. But like if I was choosing to get any form of plastic surgery, which I haven't. Okay. <laughs> but if I want to, it's my business and I'll share it with you. And I don't give a good goddamn. I would get a nose job. I've always said that. I think it is like the one thing that you can do. But you have a perfect nose. Thank you so much. I do I'm so grateful for it. It is perfectly, it works great. It's all that, but like I look at hers and I'm like, that's a yeah, solid job. Nose, like yeah. it looks gore. And she's, she's a beautiful girl regardless, but like the nose job really like takes it up a notch. So like their whole last year has been super weird and there's been all these things flying oh, really? around. Wait, what has been their last year? Well, I mean, now I mean, they did just have a kid, so that's all great. But like What'd everybody was spec, I don't know, hmm. but everybody was speculating that they were getting divorced, but they weren't. I don't think ever. Listen, I don't fucking know, but I don't think they were getting divorced. I think that they have known that this investigation really kicked into high gear. I think it's been going on for the last year. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And so to her, get a warrant, her dad like made some cryptic thing like, you know, everyone need like pray for Justin and, and Haley like they're about to go through it or like I think he said something recently like the calm before the storm so like this has been coming down where was her dad saying this it's just a headline it's on, probably on Twitter oh, or okay. probably or like on, an, an interview or, yeah. or something okay yeah or he's just like you know he's one of those people that just like says stuff that you're like oh like <laughs> what a country what, what, what another always, country, another heard, country from. heard from yeah <laughs> That's my mom's favorite thing. Oh, yeah. Another country heard from. Yeah. Um, so he had said something like that. They've clearly looked like, I mean, Justin, of course, has looked like disheveled dog shit for years because of just his drug abuse and depression. He got that, did he have like Bell's palsy for a while? Or That's like, right. like or I don't know if it was Bell's palsy, but he had something wrong which with I his face, like which I think it stress, stress induced. Really yeah. I to know that, that like videos might come out of you that sexually I, like, taken advantage fucking, of. Yeah. Like just can't imagine what that would feel like to already have to have to go through it, to relive it, to all the years that like, you know, as you go, as you walk through life, you never really know what that next year is going to bring of like how mm. that's going to affect you that year. Or like, it just seems to be like a weight of a fucking gorilla on his back 100%. from this whole thing. And it's got to be like, oh, you think you've healed from it, right? And yeah. then all of a sudden this exactly. whole situation rears yeah. its ugly head well, and you're reliving it. you haven't healed from it and you're holding on for dear life. And then you find out that not only could there be a tape coming out that's going to show you doing something, uh, getting abused, but like with dudes. Like, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. Oh, in a way, I hope we don't. I hope that whatever happened to him as a kid, it's almost just like he stays a kid forever in like the court of law rules where like you yeah. can't say their names. You can't release the tapes. You can't release the, the tapes should never be released. No, no one should ever be violated like that. No. Like the, you, you were victimized once or God yeah. knows how many times this happened to you. 
nobody needs to see it. Right. Nobody needs to see it. I will say if he was victimized in all of this, which feels like it really could have been the case, my heart breaks for him because that is, I mean, he was a really young kid around him. Yeah. No, it's fucking disgusting and so predatory and so just like, like, why would you do this? Like, you could go do a bajillion things. You have the power to go do anything. Why would you choose this? And Mike's always like, that's exactly why they choose that. Because you can do anything. And you did this, and that was cool. And then a week later, oh, it was kind of, oh, I've already done that. So then you're just like, keep on pushing for the next thing. Like, it almost becomes like the, oh, I can't? Watch me, I will. Like, well, because so crazy. if you're doing things like this, you, you're mentally ill. There is there is something that is really amiss upstairs. And greed or narcissism or like if you're a sociopath, which if this is true, I don't know the exact definition of a sociopath, but it seems at least sociopath adjacent. You stop at nothing. Yeah. Literally nothing. Scorched earth is st- there's still something for you to you know push past even when you are standing on literal charred rubble because you just that it's a bottomless pit of need that you're trying to f- fill yeah and i think if i was gonna like therapize sean because i can't call him diddy with a straight face anymore i, know. I just call him puffy <laughs> or puff like yeah totally. but, I don't but know that's why. also yeah, strange no, it's also but i put a y on people's names like for endearment totally i'm not calling mommy yeah, daddy exactly. corky yeah exactly not di- yeah Ugh. he seems like someone who never felt like he could actually be who he was sexually speaking oppressed his sexual desires oppressed his sexual desires as soon as he got a little bit of money fame power under his belt he realized he could use that to his advantage this is just my opinion on it used it to his advantage got a little like a drug addict if you have that addict gene right it's like you get a little taste now you want more and Mm -hmm. more and more and it's you it's never enough because it's a a true disease that you have and it's almost like this 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 suppression of his sexuality became a sickness for him that he would let you know, come out in fits and starts. And then the more successful he got, the more power, the more money. He's like, screw it. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. No one's going to stop me. I'm too big to take down. Like, like who's taking down American airlines? Okay. These, some, there are companies that are just too big to fail. And I think there are certain celebrities or people in that like entertainment sphere that feel too big to take down because you're taking down titans of industry and how does that affect every other person around them because it's not just when harvey weinstein got nailed for all of this and went to jail it's not just him singularly being plucked out of society and put into prison it's the entire movie industry that gets affected but even more specifically his the Weinstein Company, which produced a lot of stuff that like everybody when I, when watched. I mentioned earlier that Epstein, like you can wrap your head around it more when you once you find out that he was working with the government and was an informant. You can. By the it, way, it I didn't know that he right. was. Yeah. Where I have to read about this. Where was this all? Where did this come out? It's everywhere. And Ghislaine's dad was wasn't he in the Mossad? I Jeff don't know. Knew each other, and he her dad is the one that introduced the daughter to. Epstein. I think I knew that. So anyhow, not okay. Horrible. The most horrible of horrible. But uh, at least you you got a reason as to why they, they let him stay out. The only thing I can come up with for you know people like Weinstein or Puff or Puffy is that it's it, it, it's economy. It's the economy. Stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> like no, you know that saying. Follow the money. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, follow the money is one thing. I think that when you are like maybe a governor of a state or president of a country or whatever, you just think, uh, okay, I know these things are happening, but you start thinking about how much money the entertainment industry is going to lose, how much the music industry is going to lose, and that it just, they can't be dealing with that. You know, you're always like, oh, I'll get that next year. 
Totally. Like, that, like oh, we're going to have that tax incentive over here. So we'll <laughs> wait till that expires. And go, like, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. That's how I think that, like, uh, you know, whoever's controlling the strings up there is like, you know, we're all just ants here and just little chess pieces that they've got to figure out how to keep the whole place running. But also, don't you think a lot of it, people are trying to, like you said, like, oh, I'll deal with that next year. They're yeah. trying to sweep it under the rug. So, for instance, oh, I know that he's a lech and he's shady, but, you know, it's it's fine. We don't have to look at it right now. Or they, they knew what they were getting into. I mean, I think people can rationalize a lot of things. Yeah. And I think, listen, there's a lot of people named in that book. And I, especially if it's just totally on the tip of being salacious and pulling them into it so that you get eyeballs. I feel terrible for them. I think some of the people that you mentioned on that list, I, I couldn't tell you I, 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 on any level if they're connected to it. Some of them, there is a ring of truth to maybe Justin was victimized by him. Maybe Usher was victimized by him. The There was someone else on that list that I was like, oh, I did you ever watch the documentary of uh, Clive Davis's documentary about his life? No, it's uh -uh. so good. It is an excellent documentary. If you haven't watched it, watch it. And at the end of the documentary, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear it, fast forward. Clive says, I am living my life now. His wife passed away and he says, I'm living my life now as a bisexual man. Clive, Clive said Davis. That? Said I didn't this. even know that. Oh, yeah. At like 80 years old, something like that. So. I think when he's brought up in this story, I'm not saying he did anything untoward, but I am saying he's open now about wanting to be intimate with men. Right. So it's not far off to think that him and Sean had sexual relations. It's <laughs> like, so foul because, I mean, whatever, you know, you can applaud all of Clive's accomplishments, but... But no, but if they were to, but this is my point, like it could have been early on when Sean wasn't talking about ha having, and by the way, he's still not, but let's just say he was talking with Clive. Clive made it known that he's interested in men. Sean said, I am as well. And they had a sexual experience together. It might not have been against anyone's will. It might have been totally something on the up and up that they just didn't want to share because maybe we didn't live in a society that was as accepting of anyone in the gay community. I don't know if anything bad happened there, but it does make sense that they could have had a sexual relationship. Right. So it's like there's just so many different shades of gray yeah. within this story where Clive Davis might have done nothing wrong, but that doesn't mean that they didn't, you know, allegedly sleep together. Right. And nobody gives a shit if they're doing it, if it's consenting adults and everyone's on the same page, you're not cheating, you're not being aggressive, you're, none of that stuff. But then you get into the territory of like, did you hurt Justin Bieber yeah. when he was a child or even a young adult? Or did you do any of that stuff to any anyone against their will? By the way, there are, re um, there are hospital records of Kim being in the hospital, or at least that's what... This girl said. Yeah, no, she, there are. She's yeah. like, I looked it up. Yeah. That that guy, what's his name? Why do I keep wanting to call him Slice? It's not Slice. Shine. Shine. Yeah. Sh I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> like, excuse me, everyone. Um, He did go to jail. Yeah. Like, so there are, you could say what you want about like, oh, hearsay, this hearsay. It's not hearsay if someone was sitting in jail for 10 years. It's not hearsay if you saw the video. It's not hearsay if you have a record of someone being checked into the hospital for a broken rib. Like it happened. <laughs> so Suge Knight uh, did an interview <sighs> from jail. Fun story about Suge Knight. Um, this was a hundred years ago. Uh, I had probably been in LA for like five years or something. And I was at the Beverly center eating at the food court. And I was like getting in line at Panda Express and the, there was a tray. There was like only one tray left. And I, picked it up and then like at the same time I just see this huge arm come in and like grabs the tray too and I we I look up and it's fucking Chug Knight and you think that he would go oh here you can take it he didn't he fucking kept a hold of it and I was like okay this is why I say America <laughs> how you do one thing is how you do everything when someone Maya Angelou thank you when someone shows you who they are believe them the first time this is why 
I said in the beginning, yes, a broken clock is right twice a day, (laughs) but not 24 hours a day. Okay, in that moment, Shug's like, "This is who I am." Yeah, no, okay. He like looked at. I mean, I fucking recognize him in the the that, second, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> you could just have that." That puts a chill up my spine. <laughs> yeah. uh, how hilarious though is it that? And he's like with like a like an entourage of probably like four or five other dudes, and you just like look over, and it's just it, it was like late at night, and this is probably like you know eight. When I say late, it's probably like eight something on like a Tuesday night. What are these? doing at the beverly center uh what's a food court like waiting all for the all waiting for their table. genius bar appointment and i feel like the other guys weren't eating it was just him like fucking chowing down on like a ton of pan express and the other guys were just sitting there kind of like around him but wait what is this interview he did oh, from so prison anyways, i'm sorry he, he yeah he did it from prison he did it with chris cuomo on news nation or what his shit. yeah he did it yesterday and um, he was asking him about it. And he was like, one of the first things he said was, well, like Puff is just, this is how he's been brought up. This was done to him, you know? So like, so I, who was the guy above him that did it to him? Which makes me wonder if it, I'm not going to say it because we have no idea. And Clive Davis seems like a lovely gentleman, but he's also old as balls. So I don't know how he was <laughs> in his younger years. But wait, what I find equally if not more interesting than that and and that's another thing to unpack when when if that something comes out not even about a specific person just whatever point being is for not one second did he negate it for not one second did he say i don't know if this happened i saw him at a party once acting shit no he didn't even deny it he said of essentially what you're saying is he was just like and this has to, we just have to stop it once and for all. Like, that's what his whole <laughs> spiel was. And I thought it was funny because he kind of went off for a while. And then the second that he left, Chris Cuomo was like, those are his own opinions. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't confirm any of that. <laughs> when Suge Knight is the voice of reason yeah. on a specific topic that has to deal with violence, sexual abuse, s- something's fucked up. But it's also funny to me. It's like Bernie Madoff being like, that's not ethical. Really, Bernie? (laughs) But only from you. That's where Chris Cuomo's career is at. (laughs) Is that like, you never see this guy on like any other network. He's on like the internet network that Chris Cuomo now does his news on. (laughs) I just am fucking shocked that from prison, Suge's tapping in being like, nice to see you in the studio, Chris. (laughs) He did all of it. (laughs) This is a nightmare. Yeah. This is horrific. I am. This is what bums me out. There are so many victims in this. Yeah. If it's true, his kids are. Yes, everyone that he sexually assaulted, beat, verbally assaulted, they're all victims. His kids are victims. Everyone's a fucking victim in this. Nobody wins. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think that maybe she didn't sit down in front of her computer and type out every word? But allegedly, uh, the guy who wrote it, he used, I think, like Tupac's pen name. Um, And then his pen name is like Chris Todd or something Mm -hmm. like that. Uh, And his real name is like Todd Christopher Geezy or something along those lines. (laughs) And he made a comment to Rolling Stone because they reached out to him. And he said, from two music executives, I was sent, I guess, the transcripts of her diaries and like all these files and things yeah that helped him patchwork together this story that apparently is kim's yeah and he said like basically you know i'm not outing my sources but i deep i'm paraphrasing but like i deeply believe that this is true yeah do you believe it's true yeah like like i said everything just just adds up like of all the things that we've been sort of tracking all throughout like just the other day like I I never knew do you remember Beyonce's sister Solange remember when they were in the elevator and she like went she like jumped on or punched him or slapped him or like whatever happened and like I never knew why and it's like out now that it's because he was having an affair and she says something like you know allegedly um I can't believe that like you would only you would throw this away like is mm-hmm. mind-boggling to me you have the most incredible woman in, in the world and this is what you would do well i don't know if this is the same affair but then there's also this like long going story about him that he uh got this girl pregnant a long time ago a- around that time maybe i don't know and that she was about to come out with it and then she mysteriously dies what yes 
And so now everyone, everyone, I, I could say everyone, but it's like pretty much fucking every time I'm, I'm watching anything on TikTok or uh, on any podcast or whatever, everyone is saying that Jay-Z is, is, is like just as bad as him. But it's just been I, a lot. Th- that I have not that heard. would blow my mind. Like that would be really like you can lose Puff. I he's a, he's a producer, Jay-Z you know, like so much, so much. But okay, but hold on, let's talk about this because this is interesting. Okay, it's kind of coming full circle to where we started. I live for Jay Z, especially yeah. coming from like North Jersey. My whole childhood, not I mean, I wasn't six, but I mean, like in high school and college, like when he was really having hit after hit after hit, it's like the soundtrack of my life, of your That's life, That's what right? I'm saying. Like, eat, like, Puffy at least was like, I mean, yes, he's on some songs, but for the most part, he's just going, yeah, uh-huh. He's the producer. He's, <laughs> he's like, like a hype he's guy like, in the DJ background. He's like, DJ Khaled, yeah. we the best. Like, he's one of those guys. He's a hype guy. Yeah, he's, he's totally. the guy that, like, finds the guys and gets them together and then crashes all their fucking music videos yeah. and gets to go to, you know, all the parties and look cool, whatever. He to me has always kind of been like a circus performer, like a like a ringmaster, you know. That's what you, I'm saying. Yeah, you can Barnum. Lo- yeah, exactly. You can lose him and all. Uh, who cares? Jay Z to me, like I don't know how he comes up with his lyrics. They all seem to me like they are very personal and like very much like a diary of his life and like poetry and like he is brilliant. Like I think he's, I think he's brilliant too. Brilliant. He has a genius. Yes, he has a genius, but. You know, the woman that you talk about, how you're like, I've been hearing about this, all these things from this, that woman, Jaguar, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But she said that he's actually worse because he's like a psychological fucking like maneuver. Mastermind? Yeah, but like, uh, I can't remember what her exact words were, but that like, he's, he's just a lot more fucking psycho about how he goes about and how he manipulates and and whatever, which will be really fucking hard brutal to, yeah if uh, uh, i don't even want to come close to even believing anything like that but this is my point and where we started okay this is why god for, I, I can't even say his name connected to it because i love him so much so like let's just make someone up okay let's say there's a guy john doe and he's some crazy musician we all he's beloved by millions if not billions of people he has a fond place in all of our hearts okay the reason it takes so long for us to believe that John Doe has done these horrific things to so many people is because, no, how could the guy who sings the soundtrack to my life, who I've watched all these interviews with, who I've seen pictures of him and his wife together with his family and seems like a great dad when he's at a basketball game with his daughter and I read his autobiography and it was so earnest and I've always loved his song lyrics because they speak to me and they sound like they're written from his life and he's being so candid about everything. This is why we don't believe right away. This is why it takes so long for us to say, Dr. Huxtable, you're a fucking dark degenerate (laughs) rapist of a human because how the fuck is this warm sweet character that we let into our homes vis-a-vis the fucking tv but it doesn't matter we have one-way relationships with people on television all goddamn day every day i think of him sitting there talking to rudy on the couch them laughing how sweet it was you're telling me this guy is satan's bartender yeah pouring shit into women's glasses and raping them when they're not even conscious. You want me to believe that? Well, that's what happened. And so that's why it's so hard to believe. I don't even want to put this person's name in the sentence because that's how much I don't believe that he could have been culpable of something like this. And that's how we get here. I I know, but uh, but now this, where I'm at now is like, you could tell me anything about anyone in this town and I would go, no. That's probably, that probably did happen. Like oh, I have I'm now. Still a belie- I'm still a believer. <laughs> I am. Like if you told me that Steven Spielberg has, you know, some shady shit going on, I would be like, you shut your mouth when you're talking to me. I think you tell me that Viola Davis is the devil. Get, get out, get out of here. There are certain people that I just, I have a one way relationship with them and I live for them. And I, and listen, of course, facts are facts. If things God forbid came out about someone that I have this weird, loving, adoring one way relationship with. Okay. I would believe it, but that's why it's so hard for know, someone we, to say totally, Michael Jackson did something bad. Totally. But I think that now if we don't want to be the, these people, we don't want to be in the group that of like, when 
people are deciding whether to say something or not that like like we're part of that group of like why they don't why they wait 10 years so now like if I hear something and like it makes any sense at all to me I'm just gonna be prepared for it to be true and like be like but here's the slippery slope with all of it okay because yes like I when you had said oh we've been hearing like for a long time that maybe Sean you know is bisexual or just you know maybe just a gay man and I said, yeah, I kind of always have felt like that was true about him. By the way, I don't give a shit. That's not good or bad. It's just your sexual orientation. We have to make sure that when we are having these allegations be bandied about, there is actual proof of these things. And that doesn't mean that I don't believe you. Of course, you're saying something. I'm not automatically going to come out and be like, you're full of shit. Like I said, what were you wearing? Were you drinking? None of that stuff. I would yeah. never say that to anyone. But you have to then look into, okay, these are serious allegations. I am so sorry that you experienced this. Let's get down to what evidence we can pull from this to really prove your case so that people aren't walking around thinking that you can just say anything and get away with it. And conversely, so that victims can be believed. It benefits everyone to live in the world of facts and and I just think with all of the Diddy stuff, we have a lot of fucking facts. Yeah. And I just really hope that all of the truth comes out. And the biggest wish I have for this just dumpster fire of a situation is that anyone that was harmed yeah, it gets some sense of peace living with the fear of like, oh, my God, this person can blackmail me. This tape exists, whatever. I don't. How do you ever really get a, a decent night's sleep? How do you ever really just release? It doesn't matter how much money you have. I know. And if because it's been it going is, on for that many years, this, imagine that many nights of nightmares, that many nights of sleepless staring at the ceiling, fucking cold sweats, which is why I attacks. brought up. Imagine if you are a global superstar and you know that it's not just like, oh, this video is going to come out and people are going to have an opinion on it. It's going to be around the world. It is going to be everything that is on every social media platform. People are going to call me a liar. They're going to whatever. Like, I'm going to have to relive my trauma. Yeah. And I didn't ask for this. I'm the victim. How do you how do you sleep at night? And you're the victimized party. Yeah. That's why it's like all I wish from this situation, because clearly something not something multiple some things happened that were so deplorable and violent and traumatic to so many people that just I just hope that they get peace that's yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. because the of damage course. is done no, and he course. needs to be put away if allegedly if he did all of this he needs to did the crime do the time yeah and I'm not some person that's like throw everyone in jail but for this situation you can go to jail if you did that oh yeah <laughs> And I hope that they make such a spectacle of you. Like, I have a really, like, weird relationship with, like, the prison system. Like, not a weird relationship, but just, like, I go, of course people need to be punished and put away. But there is something about putting people in um, solitary confinement. Like, it just, I think about, you're just, and let, if you ever plan on letting that person out, you're literally just making them crazier than they are. Oh, my God. In. Well, this is a whole other episode right, for right, another right. day. So, that said... Hope they get the book thrown at them so hard. Yeah. Because there's just no, if you don't have consequences, if you don't, if if people out here that are still participating in this bullshit, if you don't see how tortured the person that got busted doing it, that is like, uh, to me, probably one of the only things that if you've got everything, if you've got a bajillion dollars, we need to hear every day about what Sean is having to go through in fucking prison because we all need Can to he know not be out on bail like is that not no an he got for him? denied twice because they and he he offered like 50 million dollars like i'm not going anywhere you can ankle strap me you can then you know he, they Case got your passport closed. You, well, i'll give you my kids passports i'll give you like we're not like yeah, and it case closed if you had any doubt. If the government is turning down cash money, yeah, because they've got so much against this guy, they believe who cares about even him being a flight risk at this point? Yeah, and it's like, no, 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 what you did is so abhorrent, yeah, that the, it is unconscionable, yeah, to let you go. 
So in a way, I would like there to wow. for for his sentence if he if it all turns out and he gets charged and proven guilty. I hope that they put a fucking camera on him that everybody can go to for the rest of your life and see this is what happens when you fuck around. You find out <laughs> like how because I don't know what else is going to stop them because there's just some people that clearly have no fear because the way that this guy has been has not just been like he's just having these underground parties oh, no, like he was these are about massively it. publicized they all start i mean i'm sure they have freak offs all, all the fucking time but like many of them are after the big white party the big fucking whatever party mm-hmm. like the the grammy party the, the whatever they're doing that's all that's always the after party of that so you've got all the fucking people all the, the all the all the normal celebrities that are there until around 11 and then they leave and then the music changes. <laughs> so if you were really trying to keep it on under wrap, you wouldn't do it during your white party. You wouldn't do it during like your parties that are like the spread of magazines. Yeah. You're so blatant. You are going out of your hiding way. Hiding in plain to sight. Fucking, but like not even just hiding in plain sight. Like you were almost just being like, I'll be over here. Like you're literally saying it to everybody. Uh, he will make announcements. He'll say, uh, this time we're going to need the kids to, uh, go on over. Like he's, he's on top of, uh, on a top balcony talking down to the hundreds of people that are at his party insinuating that some shit's about to go down. Really? So like, yes. Like not, not saying like, yeah, I'm about to fuck a bunch of dudes, but like, and I'm going to get it all on tape. He doesn't say that, but right. he says very much like the kids the are going to change. change. So yeah. He's kids like table. advertises it. Yeah. yeah. So like you're being that blatant. You're either dying to get caught because like, you fucking hate yourself and you're like, just want to be punished at this point, or you are just such a fucking. Well, no, it's uh, like that, the Icarus of it all, right? Like his, the one stipulation for Icarus is like, you can't get close to the sun because it'll melt your wings. Yeah. And he was like, but I I have to get closer. Yeah. And it's that hubris that took him down. So yeah, it's just like every day he just like wants to like prove that like I I can can do whatever I want. I can be louder. I can be more public about it and I'm not going to get caught. And no one's going to get, okay. So before we wrap this up, like what were the wildest parts for you? Like the wildest parts that I have no proof about any of it or like the wildest parts that I do believe really happened. Well, which one? Oh, well, I mean, any, any that you're just like, that just kind of blew you away that like I, when I read this, I, my jaw was on the floor. Like I, I literally caught myself I well because I was in bed like laying with my phone like this and I could I remember being like how long has my mouth been open I, I, I was literally like this I think to me the the stuff that's factual uh, allegedly like just when you start to go back and do the count of how many people are in his sphere that have died yeah. under mysterious circumstances that was a real putting yeah. those dots together yeah whatever brings the pneumonia on or like whatever, whatever it is. Like I've only heard about fucking the Russian president doing that. Totally. I, I like, and people getting like, so sick yeah, out of nowhere yeah, exactly. and withering away. That's yeah. why I think it, that's, that's why I feel like this is what happened to Jamie Foxx. I have no idea. And no one has even said that the girl who did these TikTok breakdowns of yeah. the book, she had said something that I have no idea if it's been verified, but something about Usher deleting 600 tweets yeah, I feel like it was like 6,000 tweets. Like if just that is it. true, I have not fact checked it. That was a really, because that's something that you can definitively go back and yeah. say, no, yeah, this there's happened. Like third party apps that like will let you go back and Correct. see every tweet that someone's ever had. Snapchat is the same. Whoever thinks Snapchat is like disappearing into the night, it is not. <laughs> nothing is disappearing yeah, into nothing the night. Is. Okay. This I have no proof of. But for some reason, when she was telling, recounting the story from Kim's book, about his interaction with Chris Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, his mom, that made my heart hurt so much because you've seen Biggie's mom and Pac's mom come together talking about like, yeah, you know, just like violence isn't the answer. It's what took our sons from us. It was what took them from you guys. But what she's talking about oh, is yeah. that Biggie's mom comes up allegedly to Puff and it's either it's at the Grammys or it's at some award show. Yeah. And he she says... Um, things are like, things are getting a little rough. Like I, I need some money. Like obviously I'm sure her son was supporting her 
to of course every way now my and mom pimps a yeah back with <laughs> mix on her back <laughs> yes yeah. he was supporting her yeah and she said and he puff says well i mean i can't just like give you money like that's like you know, the accountants are involved like we've got to get the other like i i can't just like give you any money and then she flat out says like did you kill my kid and he's like i can't <sighs> in the book uh kim or whatever in the book it's alleged whoever wrote the book um alleges that not only did sean have a part in killing chris wallace but is the reason that he was killed that i i I don't know can't speak to it have no idea what did seem like oh my god this actually happened was when she came up to him and said like hey i would love to be able to live you know financially take a breath and my son is has made all this money is making money off of royalties yeah and basically he was like opened his wallet and was like here's 500 bucks cash yeah, like whatever he had in his wallet write your fucking check from your own fucking bank account well, that's you more off. the point like yeah. let's just say his uh residuals and like b- yeah. accounts that got all that money were tied up seven ways to sunday let's just say okay yeah he all we all he talks about is how wealthy he is wiping his ass with hundred dollar bills okay so cut her a check for a hundred grand yeah you you cut the check for a hundred grand to get the tape back of you beating the shit out of this girl at a yeah. hotel. Clearly, you have yeah, the money you to spare. The court fifty million dollars, like to give them your house, yeah, the deed I to think your house. Miss Wallace, he, and he this is actually is our telling too. He also offered the deed to his mother's house. Like, why don't you just let your mom live her life? Why are you offering up your, the deed to your mother's house? But for that's life? why that yeah. part really broke my heart because yeah. I could see it being true. Yeah, and. Even if the the accounts were tied up seven ways to Sunday, he could have cut her a check. Yeah, anything. And just the audacity to be like, helpful. I can't just give you money as if like you're not doing literally whatever you want 24 hours a day, Correct. seven days a week. Correct. Uh, on all Sell levels. a pinky ring, bro. Yeah. And let Miss Wallace, you know, retire in peace. Yeah. Because that's all your quote unquote best friend wanted to, was to see his mom and his kids. Yeah. Live a stress free, beautiful life. Yeah. So that was really upsetting to me. It it didn't surprise me, I guess. I just think I was also really taken aback. And this isn't just from the book. It's from watching that tape. It's from just all the other stuff that's come out. The violence is really upsetting. Yeah. It's really disconcerting. Like the fact that people just think they can... It is never, uh, if you're defending your life, yes, of course, I'm not just going to sit back and be like, do whatever you want. It tickles. No, I'm going to push back. I'm going to fight back. But that's not what we're talking about. And for you to beat the ever loving daylights out of people and on the reg and think that like you just get to do that, that is, that is heartbreaking. That is just so gross. It's so gross. Like one of the like, what the fuck moments for me was when he got word that big was leaving to go start a label with Tupac. Anyhow, he decided to take all the security off of big. And he says, uh, you know, it's a lot, it's a big strain on my like setup to have to protect people. So like, I'm not going to be able to protect him. You're Um, on your own kid. Yeah. You're on your own. Even though puff is the one I think, allegedly that, <laughs> that shot Tupac. Uh, that it was he just when he got, was leaving the recording studio yeah, in New York. And he just, yeah, like, and there's that epic picture of him. Like, God, I don't mean epic, like to glamorize yeah. violence, but just like he had made it. And he was like giving the finger to the yeah. camera. Cause he's yeah. like, can't get me. Oh, I miss him. Yeah. I so he's like sends him basically to his death. Like I have always thought that they were like the best of friends. Like I, I mean, ride just or die. like all you ever saw of them was as if they had known each other their whole lives. Like it really looked like they had a fucking real bond. Totally. And even at the end of it in the book, allegedly Kim <laughs> says, why would you let him die? You've invested so much money in him. Like, and he makes so much money for you. Like, why would you do that? And he says, you don't you have no idea i can make so much more money off of him being dead but this is the thing about a sociopath and i we're we're in sociopath waters right now yeah okay you it i was obsessed with bernie madoff when it happened because to me most people when they have a kid they would throw themselves in front of a speeding bullet 
train, you name it, to save their kid's yeah. life. Yeah. Okay. Not only did Madoff not do that, he everything he was quote unquote building at his company yeah. was only leaving his kids in the direct line of fire to be fucked. Yeah. Okay. He, in his mind, is like, I'm protecting them because they don't know what's going on on the 17th floor. That's like where all apparently the yeah. crazy stuff went on. After he went to prison, his one son killed himself and the other son died of cancer. So you tell me if what you were doing was protecting your children. Because you. this is what I'm talking about where it's like you get to this place where the illness, where the darkness the the disgusting behavior knows no bounds because it is greed at it's a zero-sum game it's greed at all costs and when something like that infects like your your mindset who you are as a person how you act he's now looking at someone who maybe was his best friend being like fuck him I can make someone else just as famous I can make more money off of him being dead I can set things up or like now even if he's not making new records, I'm getting funneled all of the residuals for it or whatever it is. It's, there is no loyalty in the mob. Right. There isn't. And it's that kind of a mentality that he was working off of, uh, so it seems. And so, no, Biggie didn't mean anything to him. It's like, they now at a certain point, your best friend just becomes someone who's in your way. Yeah. Then Faith Evans comes over and says i'm pregnant like and she's she starts off by saying allegedly um i was honored that you asked me to keep an eye on him so basically kind of insinuating you asked me it was an arranged to, situation like, she says you know i'm pregnant and we're gonna need money and he says i i've got you like which is funny because the mom just asked for some cash and you know whatever but now he's gonna tell this girl I've got you probably because she knows what happened because she says right after that, you know, he didn't have to die. Allegedly <laughs> um, cut to right after that, go watch the 1997 VMAs where he performs with faith and sting and one twelve and like a big Gospel fucking choir. choir and- this motherfucker faith is over here on one side of the stage. Sting is all the way on another. The choir is up on risers. There is a tunnel like a, a hallway entrance that you see a flash of light, like white light blasting. And then you just see this figure coming out and like dancing in like the fucking dumbest dance. But like a way that he was like taking up space and he comes out and he goes all the way around the stage, like just drawing every attention to himself and then does does the fucking song, does his whole solo part. It's kind of hard with you not around, like... Is it? Is it like it doesn't it's, seem like did you think about this in advance? Like, can't believe you're not here. You can't? You can't believe it? You fucking sent him to die. It's giving a little the lady doth protest too Ooh, much. Right. Like, but like, wouldn't you just want to be like, I'm just gonna like lay low going no, forward? Because no, that's exactly. what sociopaths do. They do the double down, which is why I keep saying it's like all of these little and I'm not saying this like it's a joyful thing. I'm just saying like these sociopathic Easter eggs yeah. are all over the place. Natalie, what was the name of what's the name of his label? A bad boy. <laughs> Hi, paging sociopath party of one. Yeah, I thought it's I told you the... that we won't stop. <laughs> Correct. Like, okay. What was what was Suge Knight's label name? Death, oh, Death Row, Row yeah. Record. <laughs> and they're telling shirt. you who they are. <laughs> yeah. Shook Knight's literally running people over with his car. I'd say that's death row. Bad boy. B- allegedly. Do you know what's funny? I, I might have even been Shook Knight that even brought this up because they were saying, or maybe it was Cat Williams. Who fucking knows? There's been there's so many fucking people out there just living, going from podcast to podcast right now. Like Mace had a new suit on. <laughs> so I love like, Mace. He's like, <laughs> but remember how all of a sudden he was like, I'm gone. I'm joining the church yeah. and I'm out of here. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe he discovered what was going I don't know. On my way here, I saw a guy wearing a t-shirt that said, don't be a shitty person. That's the moral of this episode. Just don't be a shitty person. I have gone down crazy rabbit holes with this. There are a lot of things about this book that are, are you can like, they would be easy to believe because it just all, it, it makes so much stuff make sense. But a lot of people are capitalizing on that. So be careful 
on your deep dives. Do your yeah. research. Yeah, like even if it is just a complete work of fiction, it does not negate no. the cold hard facts about what have come out about him. No, that's he, it. He trafficked people. He drugged people. He had photographed everybody fucking in every which room. I think they had like 250 cameras <sighs> and then bringing in a shit ton of sex workers and some were underage. Maybe oh. maybe maybe many were underage, but literally <sighs> transporting them across state lines to have sex with everyone. Anyone and everyone who wanted to be a part of this, it seems. You don't operate like that if you're not just like daring people to come for you and and it never happens so you just keep daring them harder and harder and do you know what's interesting now that i'm thinking about it in the statement that the kids put out yeah there was not one thing about their dad oh yeah it's just all about their mom yeah you know you could say it's neither here nor there fine but just file that because that is something that happened they put that statement out they didn't say anything about their dad yeah saying like and these allegations are categorically untrue about my dad suge knight said uh back when i was running death row when i was doing this that and the other i had a great run and now i'm here and i've been here for 10 years and c to the t and he said Crime to the he time. said i'd be curious to know if puff like if he could do it all again would he and i'm he might say you know what i had a great 30 years it's all was worth it, it. Was it? Totally. People are dead. I thought that was very telling of a person who also used to have a shit ton of power and I'm sure participated in many of those similar things. I don't, yeah. know, don't know if he was fucking dudes or not, but like. I need to take a shower now. I need to go back through yeah. this and see if any of all the shit that I remember hearing or reading is like, I have a fucking issue with getting my wires <laughs> so if you take any one single thing away from this is the word allegedly <laughs> it might just be me alleging it also can i just say i feel like next week will be lighter yeah. i had a guy do a really nice thing in on the way here in the car and i i, I want to talk about that next week because i think we need to shine a spotlight on yeah. some do-gooders yeah yeah okay i really have to pee go i love you ciao for now ciao for now